it becomes tiresome to constantly hear the bad and classic judgment of cities. It turns out to be even worse when you live in a city, trying to defend your place in the best way possible. Changing a person's view on a subject of matter becomes difficult because it might be something that was instilled in them. People often believe what is routinely said and expressed by others through various forms of gossip. This develops into stereotypes that are bad judgment calls on many things. Stereotypes are often used as generalizations of a particular place or person slash people. These stereotypes are seen all over and at least everyone and everywhere has a certain stigma towards them. Living in New York City brings a talk of a lot of stereotypes. They can come from a person's experience, word of mouth, or simply someone's impression of another person. These bad depictions of the city include congested areas filled with poverty-stricken people. The story Maggie, a girl of the streets, describes a place that the characters into into as a dark region where, from a careening building, a dozen gruesome doorways gave up loads of babies to the streets and the gutter. From simply reading the description of a city, one can assume that the city itself is disastrous and congested with people that aren't so fortunate in life. Their space for leisure is contaminated with their waste, which would infer that they are not well off and financially stable to live more comfortably. Paralleled is the story he, in which the speaker describes a place that he journeyed to as having narrow, curvy alleys and passages. From simply reading this narrative of a city, one can accept that the city itself is very jammed. Looking at this on another level, people can now make wide generalizations that all cities are places that are dark, filthy, choked with people that have no sense of boundaries and jammed of space. Growing up in New York City, my eyes have seen all types of places. New York City itself is congested with edifices that are known to people as their place of work or rest. Restaurants, houses, parks, and other locations are all different areas that people are surrounded by. My neighborhood is an example of where this stereotype is expressed fully but then challenged by other forces. I live in central Brooklyn where you can see the congested areas that are poverty stricken. One area is crammed with housing projects, bodegas and fast food restaurants. The streets are litter filtered, places are packed and people give mean mug stares. If someone were to encounter this area on their first visit here, one would begin to give in to all the negative stereotypes of the city. Challenging these depictions are a few blocks down where one would believe they stepped into a totally different area. This is where I reside and my surroundings are private houses with accessible front and backyards, schools and parks. The streets are clean, smiles are blossoming and it seems like the bright side of the area. In the book Dog Fight a Love Story, the stereotype that places are crammed is played on throughout the story. The main characters are a Spanish family that includes the father, mother, two sons, and one addition, their girlfriend. They all live in a tiny apartment, but they make do of what they have. This plays on a stereotype that in cities, apartments are very crammed and taken up by many family members at the same time. This can give people an idea an idea of being uneasy or uncomfortable in your own space. Even though this can be true for many people living in cities, it is necessarily not the same experience for everyone in New York City. To conclude, the city stereotypes that are commonly known and presented in these stories aren't fair. The stere stereotypes that are that cities are known for as congested area where poor people populate. These general stereotypes aren't fair because they are based on a specific area, not the city. It can be based on bad experience or media, which isn't always portrayed in a good sense. The ideas of cities that were portrayed in the stories weren't true and only were from outside sources' points of view. In my personal experience, I do not live in poverty, nor am I a victim of poverty. I live comfortably and am happy with my living situation. Even though some people do experience this kind of life, I am happy to say I have escaped this stereotype. No matter what environment, of person grew up in, it shouldn't define them. People should be a product of their household.